John Cena is also uh, coming back, as we now know, uh, or as, as we have known for a while. Uh, James Gunn has mentioned on threads recently that John Cena is going to be reprising his role as Peacemaker, which isn't necessarily, again, news because we have known this for about a year since they announced that they were going to do a season two of Peacemaker. But what is news is that James Gunn has sort of implied that, you know, this new season of Peacemaker is going to sort of stand on its own, as in it's not necessarily in the same continuity as the first season of Peacemaker. So I wanted to ask you, like, how does that even work? Like, you know, because it's for, for like a year now, we've been hearing Peacemaker season two, Peacemaker season two, and James Gunn is going to work on it as soon as he finishes Superman Legacy. But now he's also saying that Creature Commandos and Superman Legacy is where the canon of the new DCU begins. So for a show that's getting a season two, will Peacemaker continue to live in the old DCEU or will he actually cross over into the new DCU? Like, how does that work? Um, I think in a way what, since James Gunn is more closely tied to Peacemaker, he's the creator, he directed the episodes. So Blue Beetle's a little fuzzy, but I feel like with Peacemaker, James Gunn has more control over this property because it's his. It's he cast. I'm assumed he helped casting. He did so much for this. It's his show. So I feel like there's a little bit more wiggle room in terms of Peacemaker outside of like the famous ending scene with the Justice League coming in and all that. It pretty much stayed close to its own thing so it's entirely possible that there is not going to be much of a reboot like like what they're with what they're doing with daredevil born again so it's entirely possible that they're just like okay we're just going to kind of continue on kind of like what they did although again much looser with um shazam fury of the gods with the superhero uh mary how she was played by michelle borth in the first movie but in the second movie they're like Nope, we're just retconning that. She was always played by both uh, Grace Caroline Curry, her real self, and superhero self. So I think they might do that because Justice League, it just had that little sort of um, yeah. scene towards the end. Yeah. So I feel like James Gunn will just be like, yeah, outside of a different Justice League, this is just going to relatively stay the same. And I think yeah. that's what they're going to go for. I don't think they're going to go full on reboot or head cannon reboot, like something like star Trek Picard with season three. So I think he's just going to be like, this is pretty much going to be the same show, maybe some small tweaks, but pretty much the same. I think that would be a lot easier to yeah. digest than full rebooting it. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right in some ways um, or probably in every way that you mentioned because I I I hear I don't think there was a lot in the first season of Peacemaker that was super directly connected to the larger DCEU story, right? I mean not that not not that there, there is a larger DCEU story to connect to all that yeah. much. But um they, I mean they had Batman references like you know there was the one with his neighbor he kind of jives with him a few times. There's a few other things like that. But I I, I certainly don't think we were in a situation where the first season of Peacemaker was so beholden to the old DCE continuity that it needs to be heavily retconned for the new uh, season two. But at the same time, like I think fans will say, and rightfully so, that James Gunn is sort of contradicting himself by saying, oh, we're doing a season two of Peacemaker. Um, and inherently that implies that, you know, there was a season one, which there was, um, but the canon for the new DCU doesn't start until Future Commandos and and Superman Legacy when clearly Peacemaker season one came out before those two. So I think it's it's like I'm sure like he's gonna get pressed on those kind of inconsistencies at some point he's gonna have to hop off the fence and kind of give a more definitive answer. And maybe the answer will come when we you know actually see this new season and and that yeah. will answer our, our questions by itself. But but I, I like, you know, going back a little quickly to the whole, even the whole, because like you said, the biggest concern would be that last scene, one of the last scenes in the finale of Peacemaker season one with the Justice League. We know that they only really had two of the Justice League actors in the scene. Like the other ones were like Wonder Woman was kind of in a shadow. So it wasn't really Gal Gadot. Uh, Superman, we never saw his face. We know it was a different actor who was kind of just donning the cape. Um, and then of course, Batman too. It wasn't really Ben Affleck. So 
they, they were kind of silhouetted even. So we couldn't really even get, you know, you can kind of easily say, oh yeah, yeah. They had a different suit the whole time. Like you can change up the suit, you can change up the actor. And we know there's, James Gunn has not been completely non-committal to the idea of uh, doing the promotion of The Flash and since that Ezra Miller is going to get recast as The Flash. Like we don't know for sure. Like you would imagine he would get recast considering everything yeah. that has happened. Um, but, you know, they keep saying, you know, he's going through recovery and then he's focused on himself right now, blah, blah, blah. We know that there is no Flash like movie or show, at least as of now, planned within the chapter one, but chapter one alone feels like it's going to last at least five to eight years, the, the, the amount of projects they've announced. So, and, you know, if, if, especially if some of the TV series have multiple seasons and then, you know, the movies spawn sequels. So it doesn't feel like even if they were to bring Ezra Miller back in Flash, they have to really address that issue until maybe two or three years down the road. And who knows where we are from a PR standpoint from, you know, on the Ezra Miller front. Like, Maybe he goes on this like big, you know, journey of self-discovery and and kind of redemption arc. And we have seen people like Robert Downey Jr. have a have a second yeah. coming with things like the Iron Man. And you would never imagine at <laughs> times like Robert Downey Jr. would have a career renaissance the way that he did. Or even Tom Cruise in many ways, like you know, his, his career was kind of going nowhere. Tropic Thunder, and then you know, Mission the new Mission Impossible movies, and Top Gun, and all of a sudden he's a Hollywood darling again. So it's possible. And then with Jason Momoa, we we know that it's very possible that you know. And look, there's a new Aquaman movie on the on the horizon. So there's for every reason why he wouldn't commit to Ezra Miller's uh, recasting during the promotion of the Flash he will not commit to that before uh, the new Aquaman movie comes out. And even after that, I think, you know, that's a pretty good casting. And it seems like the one thing that James Gunn has been open to is any character that was cast really well previously, he's kind of open to continuing forward with it. Even if the, the iteration of that character sort of changes a little bit, maybe the, the, the they don't adapt all the previous canon of the DCEU. But again, the two Aquaman movies, they sort of at least... I mean, you know, from the trailer for the new Aquaman movie and the Lost Kingdom and watching the first Aquaman movie, both of those weren't all that heavily connected to the larger DCEU. They didn't feature any big cameos. They sort of lived in their own, you know, section of the universe. So you could easily say, oh, yeah, you know, that's a new DCU. It's always been that way. And, you know, the Batman and Superman in that world of those movies were always, you know, David Cornswick played that version of Superman, not Henry Cavill and blah, blah, blah. So... It, there is a lot of room for interpretation. And you know, getting back to Peacemaker, I definitely think, yeah, whether they call it Peacemaker Born Again or something like that, or they call it Peacemaker Season 2, uh, it's it's going to be an exercise in marketing and PR like we have never seen before. Because Fox like did it in a certain way where they were just like, F it, continuity, continuity just good movies and then occasionally the bad one like you know x-men apocalypse or dark phoenix or rather they it, it, actually to be more honest with the x-men movies at fox it felt more like for every three bad projects you might get a good one so it was more you know but like still continuity spontaneity who care um you know all the other characters might change but like you know Lo logan uh, wolverine is always going to be played by hugh jackman um so uh we got we, you know and then some there were movies where we were like okay the younger version is played by um what's his name um why am i forgetting the name uh, james mcavoy and the older version is played by patrick stewart and they're the same character but not really because you know x-men the last 10 didn't actually happen but blah 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 like anyway so right. we know that you can play hard and fast with the rules and get away with it as long as the movies are good I think yeah. people will still come and watch and and if, you know having i think we were kind of spoiled by the mcu in a way where like everything was so uh, anyway well everything is clear but even the mcu there's inconsistencies that people will point out oh yeah that, you know uh between the movies that are meant to be exactly connected but they don't quite match up like some post-credit scenes that led to nowhere or the way they, the character design of Thanos like changed four or five times up until we finally got him in Infinity War. He looked very different at the end of the first Avengers movie than he did at oh, the yeah. beginning of Avengers Infinity War. So, and like you said, you know, like they've changed the costumes of like Shazam had a totally different costume in the second movie than in the first one. So these seven things happen. Um, and hopefully with Peacemaker, we'll, season two will get some more answers about, well, how does... John Cena's character fit into this new DCU 
Will the first season be canon? Will we get Vigilante back? Will Eagly be back? I certainly hope Eagly is back. Um, let us know in the comments below, guys, what you think about uh, John Cena coming back in, uh, in the new DCU with Peacemaker Season 2, which is, again, not news, but it doesn't, you know, the question becomes like how much of Season 1 counts in the canon of the new DCU with the canon officially beginning in Future Commandos and Superman Legacy. So let us know in the comments what you think uh, and like and subscribe for more content like this. We are back here every day on DCU Daily with more news and updates all about the world of DC and DC Comics.